This is a view from the bunker. Now, here's Derek Gilbert. From Mount Hermon to Skinwalker Ranch, something strange is going on out there and has been for a very long time. Welcome to A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. Please take a moment if you're watching on YouTube. God bless you. Click the bell, subscribe, and uh, then guarantee we never get canceled by downloading our free mobile app that's available for iOS, Android, and Amazon Kindle Fire phones and tablets. Why? Because the content comes directly to you, does not go through gatekeepers. We will not be canceled from our own app. And so you'll find that uh, tool to fight back against the uh, censors of the internet at gilberthouse.org slash app. You'll also find it at vftb.net. Look in the top menu bar for the link. Joining us is a gentleman we've known for quite some time, and uh, we've we've exchanged research uh, information back and forth over the years. Um, we are proud to consider him our friend, and he has just released his first b- documentary film. Uh, this uh, is under the banner of Truth Seekers Research, and there'll be a link in the notes to where you can watch this, uh, stream it at uh, vimeo.com. Um, really, this this connects a lot of dots, ties together a lot of things, and I'm not exaggerating when I say it's connecting everything from Mount Hermon to Skinwalker's Ranch. Um, the film is called Skinwalkers and Stranger Things of the Unseen Realm, and we are honored to welcome filmmaker Chad Riley to the program. Chad, it's good to see you again, brother. It's good to see you too, brother. It's always an honor. This is a um, a very wide-ranging film, about two hours and 30 minutes, uh, but it's there's never a section in it where I felt like things were dragging, like it was being padded. Um, You put a lot of research, a lot of information in here. Again, everything from the the Watchers' Rebellion, the Genesis 6 worldview, uh, through the present-day UFO phenomenon. Um, That's a big topic to tackle. Why did you try doing this for your first film? Well, I actually just started out to do a film on Skinwalker Ranch, but my research quickly led me into remote viewing, The remote viewing led me into a lot of the um, government programs, uh, mainly through the CIA, uh, one branch called MK Often, which got into the supernatural and satanic rituals and Edgewood Arsenal, uh, Pure Rich, um, Dulles. I mean, it it quickly spiraled out of control. And um, yeah, it... uh, it was about 480 pages of notes, and I had to whittle it down to about 88 pages for the script. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, with, with all of that, uh, how did you manage to keep it just two and a half hours? Yeah, that I had to I had to whittle it down and just kind of cherry pick what I felt really needed to be in there, what was the crux of the matter, and and just uh, tie it all together. Well, when you're starting with Skinwalker's Ranch, which uh, viewers. I, I assume are somewhat familiar with a place in Utah where uh, anomalous paranormal things uh, have been reported for some time now. There, uh, I don't know how many series of a, a special, uh, how many seasons of a series on uh, uh, probably History Channel. I forget which network carries it, but uh, deals exclusively with the research at Skinwalkers. Right, four seasons. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so. Uh, if you're going to look at something in the present day that is currently being investigated by paranormal researchers, attracted a lot of attention. Um, uh, why go all the way back to the distant pre-flood past and start with Mount Hermon? Well, I mean, even uh, the Skinwalker Ranch area, the whole Uintah Basin area, um, it goes all the way back to 1776 when a uh, Franciscan monk was out there in that area and reported three fireballs flying around in the sky. So it, it actually, that whole area goes way back, and the Native Americans talk about it, I think, up to almost 20 generations. Um, but, um, yeah, that whole area, and then even the the Great Witch Purge of 1878, I mean, it's a lot of phenomenal history in that area. But, yeah, the, uh, the Mount Hermon connection, for sure, um, you know, just that that whole temple, the Kassar Antar, and the um, the uh, goodness, uh, the gentleman's name is eluding me. The one that made the discovery, Sir Charles Warren, who was actually yes, Sir Charles Warren, who was actually the police chief during the Jack the Ripper murders. Right. Um, that I thought 
yeah, that was very fascinating as well. So I, I guess an, another way of phrasing the question then is uh, since the secular research uh, of the type people would get on the uh, the History Channel um, focuses on extraterrestrial or or uh, other sorts of paranormal activity, um, how do you then connect it to the the Bible? and to these uh, entities well known to the Jews of the Second Temple period, um, which was when the book of First Enoch was written that really expands on that four short ver- the four short verses in Genesis chapter 6 to explain what that whole thing was about and why those sinful angels, according to Peter and Jude, are now in the abyss, in chains, in gloomy darkness. Peter even specifies they're in Tartarus, which in the Greek mind was as far below Hades as the earth is below heaven. I mean, this is like double secret probation. Um, Why connect it to the angelic realm when all of these other researchers are looking for, you know, extraterrestrial connections? Well, the, I guess the thing that actually got me to approach it from the aspect that you're talking about would be the hitchhiker effect. Because once I started researching the hitchhiker effect, that's what led me into remote viewing and even took it all the way back to 1947 with Kenneth Arnold because Kenneth Arnold was the first person who, uh, as far as I was able to uh, document, was the first person who encountered the hitchhiker effect. After he saw the nine craft over Mount Rainier in Washington, uh, he uh, his daughter came out later and talked about this on interviews, but also in his book, he wrote about poltergeist activity occurring in the house after that uh, incursion and that um, they, they saw orbs, craft and things around the house, just all sorts of bizarre things. But, and then you look into the remote viewing aspect, the remote viewers were also some of the very early pioneers who were encountering the hitchhiker effect phenomenon. Um, Yuri Geller, for example, when they were testing Yuri Geller out, a lot of the scientists that were researching him were having, you know, demonic activity taking place in their homes as well. So that's where, you know, it's like when you really look into this, you see that there's a connection to all these and it has to do with this hitchhiker effect phenomenon that is well known out there at, I mean, at uh, Skinwalker Ranch. In fact, in the film, I have the clip that uh, Travis Taylor, who's part of the TV show, who comes right out and says that the reason why Bigelow got rid of the ranch is that he believed that it was the ranch that killed his wife. Hmm. In fact, hmm. I've I've even heard so far as that it he not only believes it killed his wife, but he also believes that it also killed his son. Huh. Now, th- just to to make sure we're clear, the hitchhiker effect, meaning that uh, by investigating something or seeing something and then talking about it publicly, something uh, attaches itself to you, your family, your property. Is that is that uh, right? Yes, uh, we see that uh, people who have encounters with certain individuals or certain geographic locations, that if you go out there, it doesn't necessarily affect you. But when you go back home to your house or, you know, wherever your family resides, that they begin to see things. There's things that start taking place in the home. They talk about shadow people, dogmen. Uh, orbs, UFO, um, even aliens uh, walking around the home. So, I mean, just bizarre, you know, insane situations. Um, Stanford Research Institute, which was involved in the uh, remote viewing uh, Project Stargate uh, project, was it Grill Flame was another one, if I remember right? Uh, Hal Putoff, mm-hmm. who was part of the uh, the group that released the Tic Tac video in December of 2017 uh, to the Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences. Um, it, it, with the exception of the CEO, Tom DeLong, the former uh, lead guitarist and, and vocalist for Blink-182, everyone else on the board of directors for that organization was connected to the uh, military intelligence complex. And um, Putoff was was directly responsible or involved with integral to the 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 remote viewing uh, at uh, Stanford Research Institute. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, getting back to the the hitchhiker effect, the researchers at Stanford Research Institute started seeing things in their homes. Did they not? Yes. In fact, what you were talking about, Hal Putoff, just now, <clears throat> Hal was also 
a member of Scientology. That's the thing. That's another one of those uh, aha eureka moments when I started looking at this because him and Ingo Swan were both OT7s. Uh, Pat Price, who was their golden boy, he was an OT3. So it's like, what did they glean out of Scientology? And you know where I'm going with this because you know who started Scientology. Right, right, it's right. It's like, the, yeah. So that's where a lot of the techniques that they use for remote viewing came from was Scientology. I, now, that I did not know. And he was also, he's also part of NIDS, which ties him directly out of Skinwalker Ranch. NIDS, which is the National Institute of uh, Discovery Science? Science, yep. Yeah, and so that was he, uh, Robert, was part Robert of the Bigelow. Nits. Robert Bigelow founded and funded that, and he was the friend of uh, former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, which is how um, the uh, the funding was allocated to the Pentagon to look into what was going on at Skinwalker Ranch and uh, how, yeah, there, there's a very incestuous uh, group of connections uh, in, in there, but I, I want to get back to uh, the the uh, remote viewing Scientology connection because you you mentioned you know who founded it, and of course we need to make clear for viewers and listeners not familiar that that was L. Ron Hubbard, the fo- the founder of Scientology, who was also a uh, friend and colleague of Jack Parsons, who founded the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and both of them were devotees of Aleister Crowley. Mm-hmm. And another interesting thing about uh, Jack Parsons was that uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, was that John Taze Russell, the uh, founder, uh, had made an end times prediction that the end of the world would begin on October 2nd, 1912. Well, that just happened to be the date that Jack Parsons was born. And he referred to himself as the Antichrist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he referred to himself as the Antichrist. And, you know, that Crowley referred to himself as the Great B666. So. And that was his. That was his understudy. So, uh, Crowley was not too happy with the uh, the Babylon working that uh, Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard undertook in the desert, uh, as I understand it. That uh, he felt they were messing with forces that were beyond their control. Um, h- how did the uh, the course of Parsons and Hubbard's lives play out? And uh, you know, what do you think? Uh, I, I mean, I know that they supposedly took the Amalantra working and tweaked it, and that's what they were referring to as the uh, Babylon working ritual. And I know that it took place between the years 1945 through 1946, if I remember correctly, and that um, the last time that they performed it, supposedly they, they were successful. Um, and in fact, I believe it was uh, L. Ron Hubbard who had made the prediction that thou shalt become the, the, the living sacrifice uh, by flame or something along those lines, which just happened to be very prophetic since he happened to blow himself up. But I've Parsons even heard did, people yeah. say that, yeah, I've, I've even heard people say that, um, it, that there wasn't chemicals and things like that found whenever they arrived on the scene that uh, they said it looked like he was performing some sort, of a, some sort of a ritual and that he had all sorts of occult things in the room with him hmm. when he blew himself up. Hmm. So, I mean, again, and, and, you know, not even just that, but even some of the connections that you really start to see there because there was a uh, researcher who had gone on um, – a radio show and brought you know brought to the to light the fact that uh, Parsons and uh what was it Parsons Goddard and um uh Kenneth Arnold all three knew one another that um you know Kenneth Arnold and Jack Parsons were flying buddies supposedly hmm. and not only that but they had a mutual friend that lived in Roswell named Robert Goddard, who was also into, you know, rocket technology and was part of the, and in fact, he used to uh, do his experiments out there at the exact same place that Jack Parsons and the Suicide Squad did all theirs out at the Devil's Gate Dam. Hmm. So again, you just keep seeing all these connections over and over and over, and they just overlap. Hmm. The, um, the connection then between the UFO phenomenon and, and the spirit realm, uh, the, how, how does the hitchhiker phenomenon then um, convince you or, or how does that manifest, I guess, with the UFO phenomenon to convince you that it's really a spiritual 
uh, phenomenon rather than a uh, extraterrestrial phenomenon? Uh, a lot of it is by the the fruits of what you what the witnesses are coming back and talking about and things that they're telling you. Um, you know that's you know the the thing about them just morphing in and out of existence like the shadow people which you know we we know about um i can't think of the one documentary and the there's several books but they get into the the thing about the shadow people people who um, have the sleep paralysis and things like that and how when they call out in the name of jesus these things just immediately stop and come to an end and and you know even joe jordan who uh through his uh ce4 research talked about that you know he and when he worked through mufon uh or still does work at mufon he uncovered close to 700 cases where people had called out in the name of jesus and if they just called out yeah it stopped but if they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, it stopped permanently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he shows beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is scientifically repeatable and that, you know, there is hope. You know, it's like it's not you're not hopeless that if you call out to Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior, it's like, yes, you can put all you can put an end to this. You uh, showed a couple of uh, clips featuring uh, well-known researcher and broadcaster George Knapp. Uh, who we had the opportunity to meet back in 2018, one of the True Legends conferences uh, hosted by Steve Quayle down in Branson. Um, nice guy. Uh, and uh, he has uh, made a career of, uh, you know, other than just uh, serving as a weekend host on uh, Coast to Coast AM, but uh, on broadcast television in the Las Vegas market, uh, digging into these stories of strange goings on at Area 51 and, and so on. Um, he mentioned a book in a clip that you showed where he was talking to Joe Rogan on Joe Rogan's podcast about a book that I'd never heard before by William Bramley called the gods of Eden. Um, so is it only Christians like us who are looking at this phenomenon and, and saying, uh, or r rather, let me, let me put it this way. How, how common is it becoming for uh, secular researchers to come to the conclusion that the UFO phenomenon is really spiritual? Well, that's, that's the thing is that a lot of them are getting there. Even people within the United States government are reaching the same results. In fact, the whole thing that uh, with Jack Parsons, with a lot of the stuff that he was doing back when he worked for um, Howard, Howard Hughes and how he got investigated and the whole thing about what he was doing um, with um, L. Ron Hubbard. And they, they fully investigated him for a while. And they, you know, their ultimate, uh, decision was that you know he had something to do with this whole UFO phenomenon something that he and L. Ron Hubbard uh, through something that somehow was associated with Aleister Crowley that they had all brought this about and kicked off this whole UFO wave and so I mean certainly the timing would be uh, w would fit in there and you know Arnold and then uh, Roswell and then uh, Aztec and a number of other phenomena or incidents that took place uh, shortly after that in the late 1940s, perhaps not coincidentally happening at the same time that Israel was becoming a uh, an independent nation again for the first time in almost 2,000 years. It is... Um, very interesting to note that uh, researchers like Jacques Vallée, another secular researcher who very, um, uh, I think is very well known for pointing out that the behavior of, of some of these craft is more uh, akin to uh, spirit beings moving in and out of our dimensions, interdimensional rather than uh, uh, extraterrestrial. You know, in other words, they've not really developed a new sort of physics. It's just that they can move in more dimensions than we can perceive. And so it appears as though they're moving in, in other dimensions. Um, the question, I, I guess, then, is why would these entities, assuming that this then, and, and I agree with you, by the way, that this is a spiritual phenomenon, uh, why would they try to convince us that they are extraterrestrials from Zeta Reticuli or wherever? Well, it's not just that they do not want people to know truly exactly who or what they are, 
but what their true purpose is. Um, the, like I said, the government a long time ago, they, they found out real quick, you know, who these, who and what these things are. Um, even back, uh, 1948, the, uh, FBI document 6751, they talked about these things were interdimensional, that they were coming from another dimension and that, uh, they were larger in size. You know, they weren't, as tall as we are, they were much bigger and much taller. Um, they even start talking about different esoteric terms in there, like the Talas and the Lokas. And, you know, uh, what's the, uh, what is it? Because, the, like, a lot of the stuff that uh, Kenneth Grant was talking about in his book, Aleister Crowley and the Hidden God, when he's talking about a lot of the stuff, he got into the whole thing about the Kelepot or the Klippeth or, you know, the, and even uh, the Citra Acre. And that was one of those things, because I believe it was uh, the first time I had heard it, it was a researcher by the name of Freeman Fly who had talked about that book. And he said that in one of the, somewhere in that book, it talks about uh, the, re the reason why NASA was created was to make per uh, contact with the other side. Well, I just thought that was an interesting term. And then, you know, it's like I automatically took it, it that they were trying to make contact with the, you know, the heavenly realms or demonic realms. But then when I found out about the Citra Acre, and you know what I'm talking about, the Citra Acre, the, another term or another name for it is called the other side. And this is a demonic realm that is supposedly ruled by five kings from Edom. And yeah, so it was hmm. one of those things. It's just like, hmm. Yeah, th this is an area where you're, you're more researched than I. This is not something I've, I've dug into. Five kings from Edom? Mm-hmm. Very fascinating. Huh. Okay. Um, did you dig into the, uh, the, the, the book Final Events by Nick Redfern at all in the course of your research? Yes, I've read that one years ago before we ever did uh, Higher Entities. Okay, right. And that, and that was the documentary that you did with, uh, with uh, Justin and Wes Fall. Uh, several years ago, I was yeah. honored to be a part of that. In fact, I'm sitting inside a building that's about maybe 25 feet from where uh, we shot my segment right outside in the gravel driveway. Um, yep. This, uh, I have to wonder about the the conclusion that was reached by Redfern. Apparently, uh, now he he in his book, to his credit, he. Uh, interviewed Dr. Mike Heiser. He interviewed uh, Guy Malone. So he did get some Christian perspective on the phenomenon. But uh, the, the idea that there is a, uh, a, a uh, group within the United States government that has concluded that this is a demonic manifestation, and, and I don't disagree with that, but the, the, the solution that they, they suggested which was to uh, bring the United States under Old Testament law and that somehow that would protect us from these soul-sucking demonic UFOs. Um, as you dug further into your research and started putting these pieces together with Skinwalker Ranch and uh, uh, the, the occult workings of guys like uh, Parsons and Hubbard and uh, Kenneth Grant, who was uh, Alistair Crowley's personal secretary, um, uh, you know, what, what, what is going on inside the government? How is the government processing this and what kind of response have they put together? Uh, their biggest thing is to just stifle, and uh, they they don't want to talk about it. You hear people like Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp, and all these people that are trying to break this information and to get it out, how they could keep running into walls with certain people. And they've talked to like three-star, four-star generals, different people, and they say that every time they get to this point with them where they just kind of like say, look, I don't want to talk about this anymore. We know what these things are. We know that they're demonic. We know that they're evil. Just let it go. Mike Heiser may ask a really good question about this uh, at some point. I mean, years ago, uh, at some point, you would hope that the federal government would have access to better theologians. So, Chad, let's go back to a, a book we mentioned just a few minutes ago. This was the um, book George Knapp brought up in his interview with Joe Rogan, uh, The Gods of Eden by William Bramley. Who was William Bramley? Uh, what was he trying to uh, do with this this book, and why did you see it necessary to bring into your uh, documentary, Skinwalkers and Stranger Things of the Unseen Realm? Yeah, uh, Ramley was a uh, attorney that had been researching the causes behind war, and I believe he spent close to about seven years researching that book. 
and he kept coming to this one conclusion that there was some sort of unseen force that was driving humanity to war with one another and that was deriving something out of it, that it was getting something out of us suffering and uh, killing one another. Yeah, I'm looking at the back cover. Uh, this book was published 30 years ago and, and by Har- Harper Collins, an imprint of Harper Collins, Avon Books. So this is not, you know, some self-published, uh, um, you know, thing run off on, on a mimeograph. I mean, Harper Collins, major publishing house. Um, the back cover copy reads they came to earth millions of years ago to spread the poison of hatred war and catastrophe they are with us still and he connects everything through his research from uh, the wars of ancient egypt the conquests of uh, you know like ramses the great or whatever and uh, even down to the assassination of john f kennedy and then concludes that uh, this is the result of an alien presence on earth extraterrestrial visitors who've conspired to dominate humankind but again the title of the book is the god's of Eden. So even though he's calling them extraterrestrial, the book is titled Gods of Eden. Um, how close was Bramley? And I guess uh, for, for researchers who are you know still working today, guys like George Knapp, Jeremy Corbell, uh, uh, who are not really approaching this from a Christian perspective, how close are they to actually identifying the real enemy here? They're they're fairly close. Um, I mean, that's that's the thing is that uh, it's kind of like Anton LaVey when he talks about the New Agers. It's like they they want to do all these works and they want to tap into his power, but they don't want to invoke his name and give him credit. And uh, so pretty much running right along the same lines. As we mentioned earlier, uh, Jacques Vallée, who's uh, another very well-known ufologist and a secular researcher who... Um, uh, says that the the activity the behavior of these uh, craft is is more interdimensional than extraterrestrial or uh, some kind of new physics which uh, again from a christian perspective is like yeah you're speaking our language now there's a there's a there's a lady who just recently came out with a book i can't think of her name right off the top of my head but i'll send you the the link to the the video that i'm talking about cuz she was just recently on joe rogan's podcast she is in the know. Uh, she's worked along people like such Gary Nolan and some of those. So you know where I'm going with this. Uh, she actually is friends with Jacques Vallée, has been to his house, and she said he took her into his study and showed showed her his study. He has an entire bookshelf. One bookshelf is nothing but books on angels. The other bookshelf is nothing but books on fallen angels. Hmm. And here's another thing. In that interview, she's talking about how he is an admitted uh, Rosicrucian. And not only was he a Rosicrucian, oh. but so was uh, J. Allen Hynek, both Rosicrucians. Hmm. Very interesting. That is very interesting, especially considering that uh, Chris Pinto and um, uh, <laughs> Dr. Michael, um, gosh, why am I forgetting his last name? Dr. Future. Um Oh, it'll come to me. Anyway, the uh, they did the uh, documentary Dark Clouds over Elberton uh, and concluded that it was a, a Rosicrucian who erected the um, Georgia Guidestones, uh, the Georgia Guidestones, which, yeah, which got blown up a couple of years ago. Um, and boy, forgive me, Mike, uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to look this up while we're talking because I, w- I want to make sure to give him uh, uh, credit uh, where, where it's due. Um, well, you know that uh, Pastor Casper just did the uh, video uh Georgia Guidestones are falling down. That I, I helped him work on that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, yes, exactly. He he did share us uh, share that with us. Uh, that was uh, brilliant. Uh, Michael Bennett. Yeah, sorry, Michael Mike. Bennett. <laughs> Doctor Michael Bennett. <laughs> they did some amazing uh, documentary work and uh, detective work in in figuring this out. But again, a Rosicrucian uh, philosophy embodied in the uh, the Georgia Guidestones, which uh, again are no more. But uh, yeah, that's that's a very interesting aspect to all of this. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> given that this is a, a supernatural phenomenon, uh, and that this is a spiritual phenomenon from a Christian perspective, we're dealing with fallen angels, demons that are working some kind of long con on humanity. What what is the goal here? I mean, why try to fool us this way instead of just uh, you know, as, as Baudelaire wrote and uh, adapted by uh, Christopher Nolan into his film, um, The Usual Suspects, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. Um, wh- why are they 
manifesting in this particular way? Well, that's that's the thing is they don't want people to think about this. They don't want people to know. They they don't even want. I mean, if you're not walking with the Lord, they're completely happy as a clam. Um, they uh, they're they're moving and manipulating people like chess pieces, whether they realize it or not. And that's the thing, like the the gentleman Bramley wrote in his book, Gods of Eden. That you know they've they've been at this for a very long time. I mean, they've been here since the Garden of Eden. And they've been manipulating mankind. Even the book of Enoch, the fallen angels, it talks about the, the angels taught humanity warfare, taught mm-hmm. them metallurgy and how to make weapons. So, I mean, they've they've obviously been deriving something out of this for a very long time. It's not just a hatred towards humanity, but it has something to do with the human souls and people being damned to hell. It's really been a change of strategy over the years though over the centuries where they used to appear to humanity as the gods of the ancient world um and i know that the modern ancient astronauts or ancient aliens hypothesis kind of stands that on its head you know the gods of eden weren't actually supernatural beings they were they were visitors from the planet nibiru and uh they were here to enslave humanity or create humanity as slaves and uh, the sumerians had it all wrong and uh, you know um now they're they're uh, well actually i think i've answered my own question it seems like that's exactly what they've done where they appeared as gods in the ancient world and now they're telling us no 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 uh, we 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 are they but we're just space travelers you you guys just had it all wrong your your distant ancestors were too primitive to recognize spacemen when they saw them. Yeah, and uh, you know we uh, you know we we know a lot of the same information because we both research in a lot of the same circles. And uh, Peter Lavenda, who wrote the book Sinister Forces, um, you know he gets into the whole thing about the the Council of Nine that uh, Pure Rich and several other people were making contact with this uh, group of entities that refer to themselves as the Nine. And um, that's uh, you know that's that's actually going to be the next film that I'm going to work on is going to be oh. on the nine, so I'll be getting into that, and I'm going to show that there has been nine gods that have ruled over every pantheon, every civilization, going huh. back all the way back to Mesopotamia, huh. uh, even the you know Mount Olympus, the nine gods that ruled over Mount Olympus, the Ennead in Egypt, and so mm-hmm. on. And you just keep seeing this nine, the nine, Anunnaki. nine. Yeah. So, I mean, hmm. it's just, it's repetitive. But that's the thing is, I think Crowley summed it up best when he said, I serve Lucifer and his Augustus Council of Nine. Hmm. So, the same, we, same story over and over. Exactly. And so, yes, these gods, these gods were here, but you've gotten into this in your research and a lot of the books that you've written, you talk about this, that these are the same gods. They just have different names and different pantheons, different civilizations. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, the nine is something that uh, Josh Peck and I wrote about in the day the earth stands still. Um, it was surprising in, and you mentioned Peter Lavenda, Sharon and I highly recommend the Sinister Forces trilogy that he uh, wrote. One of the books in the trilogy is called the nine for that very reason. Um, we, we joked during one of our interviews with uh, Peter that uh, his trilogy is sort of like the six degrees of Charlie Manson because everything seems to connect to Manson and um, uh, another researcher by the name of Dave McGowan who wrote uh, the book Programmed to Kill, which got into Manson and other uh, serial killers of the 60s and 70s like Henry Lee Lucas um, and others who almost appear to have been created by the government in certain programs. And when you start looking at the um, the connections between guys like uh, Manson and, uh, for example, uh, Scientology um, mm-hmm. and uh, the Process Church of the Final Judgment connected to the Son of Sam and their connections to Scientology. And the way the Process Church, by the way, was um, rebranded as a... Um, uh, as an animal rights organization, you know, sort of like the ASPCA, it's it, it bizarre, but uh, the, what used to be the Process Church of the Final Judgment, which came out of Scientology, connected to the son of Sam, David Berkowitz, uh, that's where President Biden got his two German Shepherd rescue dogs that keep biting Secret Service <laughs> agents from what used to be the Process Church. I forget what their what their organization is called now, but I mean... 
it, when you start looking at these connections, and Lavenda does a wonderful job in this uh, trilogy. Uh, and you but, also you know, touched. You also touched on the whole thing about McGowan. He also did the book Weird, uh, Weird Science in the Laurel Canyon. He gets into all of this, as well as O'Neill, who wrote the book Chaos. Right. And, I mean, that's the thing. It's like the guy that was the handler for um, uh, Manson that you were talking about, he's the same person when after uh, Ruby shot um, Oswald, they said that he was asking, what happened? How did I get here? Hmm. Well, when he got sent to prison... The same guy who was the handler for Manson, and O'Neill talks about this in his book, uh, Chaos, he said he goes to visit Ruby in prison, and within 45 minutes of speaking to him alone, when he came out, he said he suffered a psychotic break, and he was never the same ever again after that. Hmm. So you got to ask yourself, because every time Charles Manson used to get in trouble, this guy would show up, and he would magically make everything just disappear, and, and Char uh, you know Charlie would walk out of jail scot-free. And so, like I said, you need to read that book. You really do need to read that book. Yeah, Sharon, Sharon, Sharon has read it. And, uh, in fact, we, we read something else, uh, speaking of Dave McGowan, and I know we're rabbit trailing away from your film, uh, Skinwalkers and Stranger Things of the Unseen Realm, but a lot of this stuff winds up interconnected, and it blows your mind when you start reading things Shh. like uh, Lavenda's uh, Sinister Forces trilogy, and you see how the space program is connected to... Uh, <laughs> Not just the Nazi research during World War II and things like the Nazi Bell and all of that, uh, you know, and Ver Werner von Braun, but the Kennedy assassination and the moon landings and and Charles Manson and others. It it, it and the nine coming back to this, uh, yeah, this this group of uh, entities that uh, were communicating telepathically with a group led by a CIA contractor named uh, Andrea Puharic, uh, with some of the wealthiest people. In from old money families like the Forbes and the Paynes and the uh, uh, the Astors and um, uh, the inventor of the Bell helicopter and uh, and two of the people wound up uh, taking in uh, a young couple named Charles and Marina Oswald. Um, I mean Lee and uh, Marina Oswald. Uh, you know, yes, Lee Harvey. Uh, so again, you've got this this connection to CIA mind control projects and you know aliens from outer space saying we we created you and we're, we're back to you know put things right and it, oh wait no we're actually the gods of ancient egypt um it, it, again your your head begins to explode and that gene um, roddenberry was one of those as well and he was yeah. taking a lot of this information and writing this series called star trek that just kind of you know has been you know as we're watching this i've been going through and re-watching deep space nine the nine, uh, on the, the nine Bajoran yeah, guys in the wormhole Plus. of Deep Space Nine. Right, exactly. So, uh, yeah, Roddenberry was a member of this group that uh, eventually included Yuri Geller, who we mentioned in the earlier part of the program. So uh, th this is all, like, so much that for somebody who's jumping into the deep end of the pool and seeing all this for the first time, and again, you pack a lot of this into the two and a half hours of your documentary. Um, uh, again, extremely well-researched. Um how, what do you hope people will take away from this? I mean, going into this, if never seeing any of this before, you can see all this and just, you know, be blown back into your chair like that old Maxell tape commercial, you know, where your hair gets blown back. Uh, it, it, and uh, how do you process it? It's it's almost overwhelming. And that's one of the things that we've always had people tell us, uh, you know, whether it was Hollow Earth or it was higher entities, um, you know, you know, especially this one. I've had people give me feedback and, you know, I've had some say this is more academic type level stuff than what you're getting into because you're 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 showing how this is all interconnected, connecting all the dots. But, um, yeah, it's one of those ones where you're not going to get everything out of it the first time you watch it. You're probably going to end up having to watch it close to four or five times, maybe more, because <laughs> I did. I, like I said, I had to take 480 pages of notes and condense it down to 88 pages. And so, of course, I had to try to talk as fast as I could, but, you know, make sure that I'm enunciating everything. And, and to, you know, that way people can pause it and they can go look something up and verify and make sure. And so... Like I said, I, I mean, I just I hope that that people watch this and not only do they see how everything connects, but that this has all been that they have uh, initiated a lot of this by satanic ritual. And like I said, these places that are satanically charged, whether they're old 
you know, whatever things may have been going on in these geographic locations previously in the past, because that's another thing. Everybody talks about Skinwalker Ranch, but it's only one of uh, multiple ranches out there in that area. In fact, there's one called Moonshadow, there's one called Blind Frog, there's Skinwalker, there's Stardust, there's, um, <laughs> did I say Bradshaw? No. Bradshaw? Okay, so, yeah, Bra yeah. So Bradshaw. In fact, uh, what is it? Um, um, goodness, I can't think of his name. The one that owned Bigelow. He not only owned Skinwalker Ranch, but he also owned Bradshaw Ranch. He bought them hmm. both at the same time and owned both of them for a decade. And hmm. Bradshaw is just as well known. Uh, have you read the book called Merging Dimensions about no. Bradshaw Ranch? Yeah, you might want to check that one out because, I mean, everything that goes on at Skinwalker Ranch, there's it's all going on at uh, this other ranch called Bradshaw Ranch. Hmm. Well, I think the good thing to remember when, when watching this, uh, to paraphrase something that our friend Carl Gallup said uh, after the election in 2020, you know, at no point in history did the Lord slap himself on the forehead and say, boy, I didn't see that coming. So... Um, the one who spoke the universe into existence and has seen the end from the beginning has seen all of this stuff that uh, the fallen realm is throwing at us, you know, to get sand in our eyes and confuse us as to what's uh, going on out there. So as long as we trust that uh, God's got this under control, he's seen it. He's seen what they're trying to do. They're playing four dimensional chess, but he's playing infinite dimensional chess. Uh, so uh, we don't need to be, afraid of any of these things yeah d disturbing no question let's uh you know share this information just to if nothing else let people around us know that uh, the fallen realm these uh demons and uh their their fallen angel progenitors are seriously trying to destroy us and everything that they that we love but uh we serve one who is far more powerful and again has seen all of their uh activity in advance, why do the nations rage and imagine a vain thing? You know, he who sits in the heavens laughs; he holds them in derision. So, um, I think we're we're all good on that uh, on that score. Um, Chad, uh, just one final question: What was the most surprising, or startling, stunning, shocking, disturbing thing that you you came across in your research? Uh, I would say probably that uh, a lot of these people knew exactly what it was that they were dealing with and that they were uh, dealing with, uh, you know, demonic and satanic uh, entities. Um, <clears throat> we had talked, uh, you brought up uh, Nick Redfern, his book, uh, Final Events. Well, <clears throat> you know, we, me and you both know Ray Boucher. We, we've met Ray Boucher. We, we know him. We've talked to him. Um, in fact, Ray sent me a lot of his documentation that he was sending to Linda Moulton Howe uh, things that he was receiving from these individuals that uh, Nick referred to as uh, the Collins elite, but that's not what they, they did not refer to themselves as that. That was the name that he gave to them, mm -hmm. um, or a moniker, I should say. But uh, they referred to themselves as, or Ray and them referred to them as the writers. And like I said, they were taken aback by what they were witnessing and what they were uh, seeing the U.S. government actively engaged in, and it shocked them to the core because these men did look at life through a biblical lens, and uh, they they were beyond shocked with what they were seeing that the U.S. government was actively engaging in. Hmm. But again, uh, the U.S. government, not as great as the one who spoke the universe into creation, who, again, is not ever taken by surprise. So uh, yeah. while those in government who may uh, think they know what they're dealing with and know how to handle what is coming their way. Um, the, the Lord and uh, creator of all is uh, already on top of the situation and has things well in hand. We just need to trust in him and uh, uh, our futures will be secure. Maybe a rough ride between now and uh, getting there, but uh, the, end will, uh, the end will turn out uh, all right. Uh, Chad Riley is the writer, director, narrator, host of the film Skinwalkers and Stranger Things of the Unseen Realm. It's available to stream right now in full HD at uh, Vimeo. Is it 4K or just a full HD? It's just full HD at 1080p. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, streaming video, if you try to stream 4K, that can get a little, uh, uh, if you if you don't have the fastest internet connection, that can bog you down a little bit. I'll put a link in the notes below this video or audio, wherever you're watching or listening, and uh, direct you to it. Highly recommended. Great production values. Excellent research. Um, and uh, again, you know, Chad, is basically you've got a lot in here to process and uh, definitely look forward to the next film about the nine. That is a really fascinating bit of American history that more of us need to know about. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting on that one. So that's why I'm hoping that uh, this one does well, that uh, we can get moved back to Alabama and see about uh, getting a place that where we can set up a base of operations where I can quickly get onto the, that must be Gracie over there, but yeah. uh, quickly get into, uh, get into production on the uh the other one once i get all my research collaborated but uh yeah, yeah it's it's well let us know when that's out when and we will definitely have you back to talk about that i'm not sure what she's seeing or hearing over there uh she is i think she, looking she's up at a... probably recommending she might be recommending the film for everybody i think that's what it is yes uh chad riley thanks for joining us we look forward to talking with you again soon Awesome. It was an honor to be here with you. Look forward to seeing you again soon, brother. You'll find a link to the film Skinwalkers and Stranger Things by Chad Riley in the show notes. Whether you're watching this at YouTube or listening at one of our many podcast outlets, please uh, take the time, get, get, get the time blocked out in your schedule to watch the film. It is really eye-opening. It is the deep end of the pool, but that is the kind of researcher that Chad Riley is. And uh, we look forward to seeing his uh, future endeavors in this regard. Coming up, well, technology has uh, disproven the story being told by Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis. The one, yeah, her, her, (laughs) let's just say her lust for power is exceeded only by her lust for another woman's husband, apparently. Uh, And some uh, very important details, a couple of schedule changes, including one uh, for uh, October in Scotland, the Nephilim Anthropology Conference. Tell you more about that straight ahead as a view from the bunker continues. It's a new month, and we have a new special at the Gilbert House online store. We have a crazy, crazy deal on all of our DVDs. They are, regardless of the retail price, they are 75% off. We keep hearing from the kids these days that everything is going to streaming video, that DVDs are old school. Oh, not for us. No, we are old school. And besides, we don't trust the internet will always be there. So take advantage of this special offer. Everything from our travel documentaries. Basically, follow us as we go through the Holy Land and show you the important sites at Ground Zero on this supernatural war, plus video teachings, oh, yeah. presentations, and much, much more. You know, with 75% off savings on all the DVDs, as many as you want to get, you've got the money that you save to go out and buy a DVD player. <laughs> That's it. Take advantage of it now online only at the Gilbert House store, gilberthouse.org slash store. And thank you for your prayers and support. Driving the internet to think every Sunday night from the beautiful Missouri Ozarks. That's that's our mission here at A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. You'll find us online, vftb.net. Our main website, gilberthouse.org, gilberthouse.org. My personal site, derekpgilbert.com. YouTube, at Gilbert House. Um, also, Twitter, at View, X, formerly Twitter, at View from Bunker or at Derek Gilbert. Facebook, View from the Bunker, and the other new social media sites, Truth Social, Gab Me, We Get Her, at Derek P. Gilbert. If you are watching on YouTube, God bless you. Please take a moment, subscribe, share that link, click the bell for notifications, and then guarantee we never get canceled by downloading our free app, the Gilbert House Ministries app, GHTV, if you will. Gets you all of our video content, all of our audio content, but also guarantees that we won't be canceled if we say something that violates you know, community standards or something. Because you know me, I'm just so controversial. Uh, no, if, if you tell the truth sooner or later, somebody's going to say, well, that doesn't align with what we want people to believe. Uh, we've seen it happen here on this program a number of times already over the last uh, three years. So uh, please get our app.
add it to your iPhone, smartphone, uh, whether it's uh, Android, iOS, iPad OS, and Amazon fin- Kindle Fire, phone or tablet. We've got links for all of those at our w- main website, gilberthouse.org slash app, gilberthouse.org slash app. Well, uh, Donald Trump, of course, is going through a number of criminal cases, uh, civil cases that are intended to essentially cut him off at the knees trying to hamstring his campaign. It's, it's obvious to anybody with independent thinking that this is what's going on. I'm not talking about the far left and the far right who are going to believe whatever they choose to believe, regardless of what the media says. But those in the middle, independent voters, are, I think, opening up and really waking up to the idea that the media has really been portraying a lot of this, uh, the corporate media, that is, portraying what's going on with Donald Trump in a, in a very slanted way. They're, they're reporting on these criminal cases or these court cases, I should say, now, uh, that, that uh, almost as though this is a normal thing, that Trump is accused of things that are very serious, and so therefore we're going to treat these as those. Just disregarding that in most of these cases, the uh, prosecutors don't have the authority or shouldn't under the law to charge Trump with what they're charging. For example, uh, in Manhattan, DA Alvin Bragg charging him with what would be a federal crime if it was a crime at all, but he's not a federal prosecutor, so he should not be allowed to even bring it into the courtroom. Um, The uh, fraud case brought by New York Attorney General Letitia James, where the judge decided right off the bat, okay, he's guilty of fraud. We're just going to have the case, the the trial, to decide how much we're going to how much we're going to penalize him, which turned out to be $355 million. First, probably the first fraud conviction in the history of ever where there's no aggrieved party. The, the banks that Trump is supposed to have defrauded, who did their own due diligence. I mean, look, you go for a mortgage, the bank insists on a third-party appraisal so that they know that what they're lending you for the purchase of the home can be repaid if you default on the loan. They can repossess the house, resell it, and recoup their losses. The banks did that for all of these loans that Trump secured and paid back with interest. So the banks made money. Trump made money. First, I mean, it it is astonishing what is taking place. But uh, what really takes the cake is what's going on in Fulton County, Georgia, where the uh, county district attorney there has charged Trump with trying to overturn the results of the election in Georgia, but somehow didn't think that her own personal and professional conduct, which are (laughs) entwined, uh, wouldn't enter into the proceedings. And when, when she was called out, her reaction has just been nothing short of astonishing. You know, of course, that uh, DA Fonnie Willis of Fulton County, Georgia, assigned as a special prosecutor a man named Nathan Wade, even though he has no experience prosecuting the kind of case that Trump, that, or charges that Trump has been charged with. RICO, which is a racketeering charge typically used to bring down organized crime figures. Okay? He's never prosecuted any of this, any case like this, and yet she is paying him a premium rate, $250 per hour. There's another special prosecutor on the case, a white guy who's making 100, who is reportedly an experienced prosecutor with some expertise in these types of cases. He's getting paid 150 bucks an hour. You can only conclude one of two things. Either she's paying Nathan Wade, the $250 an hour attorney with no experience, more money because he's got more melanin or because she's sleeping with him. Either way, that's bad. Okay? But when she was forced to admit this, because it came up in uh, Nathan Wade's divorce proceedings, she actually went to a church and played the victim card. So they're going after me because of my gender and my skin color. Well, the, uh, the official story from uh, Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade uh, is that their personal relationship began in 2022, after he was appointed special prosecutor in the uh, Trump case, as if that makes it better. But it turns out that thanks to technology, we know that that's not even true. Wade's cell phone records, which were obtained by a private investigator hired by attorneys for one of Trump's 
um, colleagues uh, indicate that the relationship between District Attorney Willis and Wade was romantic well before November 1st, 2021, when he was appointed special prosecutor. They were able to subpoena from AT&T Wade's cell phone records from January 1st of 2021 through November 30th of 2021, and they found through location data that he was spending an awful lot of time in the same vicinity as Ms. Willis's home. They also found that the two of them exchanged over 2,000 voice calls and just under 1,200 text messages in that 11-month period. All right, so that's like, what, uh, almost 200 calls per month. <laughs> so, what? Uh, Divided by 30 days, like, what, six calls a day? Something like that. Six to seven phone calls per day between those two people who were reportedly not a thing at that point and were not working together on the Trump case. Wade is not a member of her staff. He's a private attorney who was appointed special prosecutor. Uh, Geolocation data, uh, because your phone's got a GPS device in it, which is why you've got the little maps app in there that works. Yeah, this this can tell on you if at some point in the future police need to access these records. Just, you know, word of warning there. If you're going to do something you don't want people to know about, maybe don't take your phone. Uh, will it, Again, as, a, as an attorney, Wade should have known this. Uh, he was at D.A. Willis's condo on at least 35 occasions, and the data retrieved uh, revealed that he was stationary at the condo and not in transit. He spent time there, and the visits were corroborated by phone calls and text messages. Well, any way you slice this, it really looks bad. Uh, If, if there is any justice at all, District Attorney Willis will not only be removed from this case, this case handed over to uh, the state of Georgia, and most of the other Districts, district attorneys in Georgia are Republican and probably more favorable to Trump than, uh, than uh, Ms. Willis, but she should be disbarred. I mean, <laughs> I don't have the power to do that. Frankly, I'm not going to get my hopes up too high because it's clear that in uh, these, over the last six years, that we, we have slipped into some sort of alternative reality here in uh, these United States. Sharon and I can can look at these sorts of things and laugh because ultimately, at the end of the day, we just have to remember, we are first and foremost citizens of a kingdom. As we described it on PID Radio yesterday morning, we're part of the fellowship of the king, if you will. And it is in that we place our hope and our trust. This world and the humans in it will usually let you down. But our Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, his word is true, and he is coming back. And just to remember, the Lord looks down. He who sits in the heavens laughs. He holds them in derision. Uh, there is a day coming when uh, they will get more of a, uh, uh, let's say, more of a, 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 a come down than just some guy with a small podcast in rural America saying, bless your pointy little head. (laughs) Uh, Skywatch TV's virtual conference, uh, Countering the Darkness, getting ready to launch. It, uh, in fact, launches this week, the 29th. That's Thursday. So uh, please take advantage of the opportunity to see Tom Horn's last conference presentation, Sharon's presentation, Opening the Gates of Hell, my talk, Hamas, Molech, and Armageddon and uh, many others, cutting-edge present presenters like uh, Doug Van Dorn, Dr. Judd Burton, um, Pastor Carl Gallups, Rabbi Zeph Porat, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, uh, many others. Uh, and, uh, well, rather than me forgetting who's in there, like Casper McLeod, Kenny C., Dr. Mike Spaulding, Dr. E. Galgram, Vicki Joy Anderson, I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out, but they're all at the website, DefenderConference.com, DefenderConference.com. April 5th through Eighth, we'll be in Dallas for the Prophetic Signs and the Heavenlies Conference, Hilton DFW Lakes Conference Center. Paul Begley, Colonel David Giamona, Pastor Casper McLeod, David Hebner, Dr. Carrie Mayday. If you followed her work through the uh, the lockdowns, you'll definitely want to see her live and in person. Dave Hodges, Michael Boldea, Tuvrose, John Moore, David Paxton, Doug Thornton. 
Look forward to meeting him. Uh, this, oh, and of course, the total eclipse of the sun on Monday, April 8th. So if you come for the weekend conference, stay over until Monday. We'll be watching it from the, the safety and comfort of the hotel there, the Hilton DFW Lakes Conference Center. More information and registration online at hearthewatchmen.com, hearthewatchmen.com. Com. In June, we'll be at His Call Ministries. That's the Finley River Ranch in Sparta, Missouri. Sharon and I basically talking all weekend long. The theme will be The Gates of Hell, the subject of our forthcoming book, which is coming out this fall from Defender Publishing. Uh, there is a uh, proposed conference. I think I skipped right over the dates. Yes, the final weekend in May, May 30th, June 1st, in uh, the Lake Havasu area in uh, Arizona. Got to get information on that. This is uh, from our friends. The, uh, the Goslings, Nick Goss, Jonathan Goss, they are bringing us out there, but uh, have to get confirmation and details on that. But all of this information, all of our tour dates, all of our conference uh, schedules uh, will be at our website, gilberthouse.org. Also on the calendar tab of our app, uh, the GHTV app, just check that out. We will update that as quick as we can. Now, of course, our our big event for the year, I think, will be our um, Solidarity Mission to Israel. That is May 6th through 13th. We are traveling to Israel. It's a shorter tour than we would normally take because many of the sites we'd like to visit and show you are in the uh, evacuated zone in the north of the country. The Golan Heights, the area just uh, up along Mount Hermon, Tel Dan, Caesarea Philippi. Uh, we wanted to take you to the uh, the waterfall called the Waters of Weeping where the angels were confronted by Enoch, when he delivered God's judgment, God says, sorry, you're not getting back up here. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, those areas still under fire from Hezbollah, so we can't go there. But we will go to two sites in the south, like Sterot. That was the town where the police station was besieged by Hamas. We'll visit a couple of the kibbutzim that were attacked. Have a barbecue with IDF soldiers. Go to Hostage Square in Tel Aviv. Visit with some of the families. We will uh, pray, show support. We will visit uh, the important sites in Jerusalem, including the Temple Mount, which at the end of the day is what this long war is all about. Find out more at our website, gilberthouse.org slash travel, gilberthouse.org slash travel. There's a link there to take you to the Lipkin Tours website if you're interested in joining us in Israel for this, uh, uh, for this event. Now, the Nephilim Anthropology Conference that was scheduled for the last weekend in October in Scotland, the Glasgow area. We've been advised that that is being pushed off for at least another year. Um, organizers got some other things going on that uh, just conflict, make it difficult to pull this together and uh, present it um, with the level of uh, production that he would like. Not that he was trying to make it like a big event or anything like that, but you got to make sure that uh, you can pay your expenses at the end of the day. So uh, we will hopefully be able to do that someday. We'd love to travel back to Scotland, uh, whether it's for this event or something else. But uh, this uh, kind of disappointing, but we understand the organizers' uh, reasons for doing it. So uh, we uh, asked him to keep us in mind for future. Nephilim Anthropology Conference in Scotland is off the calendar for this year, but uh, we pray that we will... Uh, be a part of that event in 2025 or sometime going forward. You can find out more again, gilberthouse.org. Our uh, calendar is there and also on our mobile app. And again, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch or listen, whether it's YouTube, our Roku channel, Apple TV channel, soon coming a Fire TV channel, or one of our podcast outlets, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Pandora, um, Gosh, found out we were even on one other major site that I can't think of off the top of my head. Oh, well. Uh, anywhere fine podcasts are sold. Our announcer, the inimitable DC Good, and a view from the bunkers of production of Gilbert House Ministries, released under Creative Commons Attribution, not commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. We do this because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Good night, Oliver, wherever you are. I'm Derek Gilbert. And this is a view from the bunker. Yeah.